Good afternoon. So first of all, I would like to thank Sophie for her kind invitation. And I have to apologize. I did not participate to NAP6. <laughs> sorry, 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 guys. But uh, I, would like, I would like actually to present some data. We have been gathering for about 20 years on in vitro diagnosis of POH perioperative hypersensitivity. Um, actually, the diagnostic approach of a POH reaction is quite uh, comparable to the diagnostic approach of an immediate drug hypersensitivity reaction. And it starts with the history taking, skin test, you have heard about it. And obviously there is some place for specific Ig and basal activation tests, so in vitro testing, and then eventually drug provocation tests in order to identify the culprit or culprits, plural, and uh, safe alternatives for the future. And obviously in anesthesiology, the history will mainly be the uh, records of the anesthesiologist and the surgeon. Um, you heard about the skin test, so I can actually skip this topic. There are skin prick tests, infoderma tests, you can always <coughs> test most all the, the drugs, except some, you actually need to establish the optimal concentration. Uh, and here you have an, uh, an example. Uh, the patient is tested by, with a buffer, which is a negative control, should be negative. You have the histamine, which is a positive control. Drug 1 could be recurrent, for instance, and then you test eventually drugs through cross-reactivity. Drug 2 could eventually be the 6 methonium. Now, the major problem with those, dr with those drug skin tests, actually, in particular for neuromuscular blocking agents, is that the validation has been mainly confined to testing healthy controls in order to establish the non-irritating concentrations. There is no, almost no data on the sensitivity of this test. So the specificity we know, the sensitivity we don't know. And in order actually to uh, bypass the problem of this absence of gold standard, which is the provocation test, the full dose direct provocation test for neuromuscular blocking agents, actually we apl applied a, a technique, a, a trick, a method by using three different tests. So what we did is we combined skin testing, base flexivation activation test, and specific Ig in one model in order to establish sensitivity of those skin tests. <coughs> and I would like to focus first of all on the, the predictive values of those skin tests. And you see that actually the positive and the negative predictive value of skin tests for rocuronium, because this study was done for rocuronium, are quite high, over 95%. So it, it appears that skin testing with rocuronium provides to use the correct concentration. Um, merit the status of a primary diagnostic tool. Now, the question we actually asked is, if you have a negative skin test, are you absolutely sure that you can give this drug safely, yes or no, in the future? And we went back to the literature and we found some cases actually in which the authors failed to prevent anaphylaxis during subsequent anesthesia due to negative skin testing. So actually, the answer is no. Skin tests do not always provide the green light for the future, negative skin tests. So there is place for in vitro testing. Luckily for me, otherwise I would have been unemployed for about 20 years. Uh, <laughs> now the, the, the two tests we ac actually have access to is first of all quantification of specific IgE antibodies and the basophil activation test. <coughs> now, the principle of the base for activation test, and my surname actually, my nickname is Batman in Antwerp. Uh, so the, the principle of the base for activation test is quite simple. Uh, the major problem is actually you need fresh blood of your patient. That's the major problem. <coughs> so you need fresh uh, base fills. The test has to be done within three hours after drawing the, the blood. So what you do is actually you incubate the, your base fills, the base of your patient, with an allergen, can be a drug. This drug or this allergen crosslinks specific IgE, which is on the membrane of the basophil. This gives rise to a degranulation, and during degranulation, you have migrations of the granule to the outer to the surface membrane. You have fusion with the surface membrane and release of mediators. And you can eventually quantify some of those medi mediators, like histamine, like leukotrienes. But in the basophil activation test we are using, it's a flow centimetry technique, we do not quantify mediators in the supernatant, actually, we quantify the appearance of certain markers or the upregulation of certain markers, and one of those markers is CD63. So it's a very easy principle. So what you have is you need to identify your basophils in the peripheral blood of your patient. You do, you do that according to site and uh, forward scattering. You do that according to the fact that basophils have IgE on their membrane, so that's the way you identify yourself. 
And then within those identified beta fields, you can uh, quantify the expression of CD63 or another activation mark without allergen or with allergen. And then you see actually that there's an appearance or an upregulation of this CD63 marker. <coughs> now those beta field activation tests have been done for a lot of drugs, uh, and they are actually some as that. <coughs> Mostly for beta-lactam antibiotics, new muscular blocking agents, fluoxetine, latex, and so on. <coughs> and this slide just summarizes the papers that have been published for new muscular blocking agents. You see that uh, nine papers now been published. Uh, the mostly applied activation marker uh, is CD63. And then you see that the specificity of the beta activation test is quite high, it's almost excellent, uh, exceeding 90-95% in most of the papers. Sensitivity is around 60 to 80%, which is not so bad for an in vitro test when it comes to drug allergy. And when you take into account certain papers, the fact that you have non-respondents. Non-respondent beta activation test means that there's no way to get to activate those cells from a, a certain uh, individual not by a positive control stimulus, nor by the drug <coughs> or the allergen. Now, we used actually the same trick to assess the predictive values of the base activation test, and you see the positive predictive value is quite nice, which means that when you have a positive result, it's endorsing your uh, diagnosis. The negative predictive value is about 75%, and this, this comes mostly to the fact that you have about 10 to 50% non-responders. <coughs> Now, what's the potential of the beta activation test? What can you do with it? Uh, what's the potential and what are some of the limitations? Uh, well, first of all, uh, you can try to diagnose the most difficult case, the more difficult cases, those cases that remain negative in skin test evaluation. You can, it can help you to tailor the safe alternative for the future. Uh, it can also discriminate within a certain drug whether it is the active component or an excipient that is responsible for the uh, reaction. And it can help you to unveil mechanisms. <coughs> Now, base field activation test for difficult case. This is a publication we we uh, just uh, well, there's a paper we just got published. Uh, this is a paper enrolling uh, over 140 well, about 140 patients that got rotenuronium <coughs> and were assessed for peak trip phase. 106 have demonstrated clear mast cell activation. I would like to focus on this group. And when the, within this group of 106 patients, actually we got the diagnosis of Rocuronium hypersensitivity according to skin tests. But we also had 49 individuals having clear muscle activation, suffered from a severe uh, uh, anaphylactic reaction during uh, anesthesia, and in which all, no other cause was found. Now, if we look to the result of the beta field activation test, actually we had a clear positive beta field activation test in eight, I think, eight additional patients. <coughs> and these are the results. Of those eight patients, a clear positive base of field activation test in patients that would have been overlooked if you would ha only have used a skin test. Um, and just to stress that our clear that our clear positive result, you have to take in mind or to keep in mind actually that uh, drugs in contrast to proteins are not so potent in activating basal cells, and a result of four to five percent with the drug as allergen in a base activation test, and we have validated is significant. So you don't need to have 10, 50, 20% of the drug that was observed positive responses already uh, from 5%. All the <coughs> controls are negative, actually. So I showed you some examples on rocuronium, and actually the same holds true for atracurium. So what we did is we did a atracurium base activation test. In the y-axis, you have the percentage <coughs> of CD63 positive cells, which means actually degranulating basal cells. This is a gr all those individuals suffered from hypersensitivity reaction during anesthesia. Those did not get a new muscular blocking agent. Those were identified as being atracurum hypersensitive because of the positive skin <coughs> test. Those had atracurum, no other cause uh, identified, but had a negative skin test. The open uh, symbols represent negative skin test. Those had cis atracurium. This had cis with the positive skin test for cis atracurium. Those had cis atracurium, negative skin <coughs> test for cis atracurium. Those got uh, rocuronium and those were succinitonium <coughs> allergic patients identified according to uh, skin test and eventually also basal activation. And you see that the basal activation test for atracurium is a rather specific tool. All those are completely negative and also those 
individuals that did not get the numerous blockages are completely negative in the basal activation test. About 65% of the patients having uh, diagnosed with atrophy hypersensitivity according to a positive skin test were also identified in the basal cell activation test. But look to those two. Look to those two. Those are, in my opinion, two interesting patients actually. This means that although the, 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 those patients suffered from a hypersensitivity reaction, all other causes were excluded, had a negative skin, had atrocum as the neuromuscular blocking agent, had a negative skin test, but almost 40 to 50% of the basophils, when you incubate them with atrocurium, got activated. I wouldn't dare to give atrocurium in such a patient, actually. So it can add to diagnosis in difficult cases. Now, also the study of cross-reactivity can benefit from uh, basophil activation tests. In this slide, it's represents a slide on the somewhat older paper. Uh, Big Rowan, meanwhile, has been uh, withdrawn for the Belgian market, actually. But it shows you the, the data in about 12, 15 patients with Rogrom hypersensitivity. So the patients were identified according to a positive skin test. The closed symbol represents a positive skin test. And what we did is we also assessed them for Vicaronium, so we studied Vicaronium, Stipton, and also Atrocrum and Cilatricum. Atrocrum and Cilatricum are not presented on this slide. But were completely negative. So we had rocuronium sensitive patients, hypersensitive patients, that tested completely negative as well in base flexibility tests as in skin tests for cis atrocrum atrocrum. Subsemitarium data here, and here you have bicuronium, and at that time it was important. No, it's less because bicuronium has been uh, withdrawn. But it tells you that actually the base flexibility test uh, complements the skin test in order to assess cross reactivity. So you have some of those actually, the open symbols, so those are rocuronium hypersensitive patients having a negative skin test for vicuronium, but demonstrating a clear positive basophil activation test for vicuronium. Again, I wouldn't dare to give a patient with a rocuronium hypersensitivity who has a negative skin test for vicuronium, but whose basophil got activated by vicuronium. <coughs> Third actually application, uh, third uh, potential of the base of activation test, it allows you to test a lot of drugs simultaneously. Uh, and you don't need to place on the arms of the patient. You draw some blood, you need some microliters to do a base of activation test. So you are not actually confined to the forearms of your patient. And this is actually a nice presentation of a patient. This is the individual plot of a patient who's uh, with mastocytosis, by the way, uh, who uh, suffered from a very severe reaction after intravenous uh, injection, paradoxically, uh, uh, to methylprednisolone succinate. So he suffers from anaphylaxis because of this mastocytosis. They gave him uh, solimedrol, and actually, he he actually it became worse. And we tested him for methylprednisolone, we tested him for uh, acetate, succinate, Betamethasone and also uh, hydrocortisone succinate. And what you actually can see is actually the patient is clearly positive on the y axis. You have DAO, which is actually a marker for the intercellular content of histamine. I didn't tell you, but we can also <coughs> quantify the intercellular content of histamine by flow cytometry. It's a very nice tool, actually. And on the x axis, you have the expression of that class classical traditional activation marker CD63. And you see that actually for methylprednisone succinate, cells are going to the right. This is actually the unstimulated buffer condition. So the cells are upregulating um, CD63 and, sorry, uh, <coughs> they are going down, which means that they lose intercellular content of histamine. And the same is actually can be observed for hydrocortisone succinate, whereas <coughs> methylprednisolone on itself, acetate does not actually induce basophil activation, which means actually that is the succinate acid that is responsible for the reaction. Fourth potential of the basophil activation test is actually it can help you to unveil the mechanism of a hypersensitivity reaction. And when it comes to the clinical suspicion, suspicion of a POH, actually you have uh, different uh, possibilities. You can have specific activation of cells of the immune system, like mast cells, basophils. Specific activation means that you have to activate the adaptive immune system. There has to be production of specific antibodies or T cells, but this is not applicable here. Uh, so it will be mainly specific IgE antibodies. So those antibodies will arm your mass of base, but you can then cross-link those antibodies and activate those cells. Non-specific ways are uh, you don't need the adaptive immune system, so you 
can actually activate some of the mechanisms. You also have mechanisms that are independent for those masses. But in some of those reactions, you can have activations uh, of those masses and eventually also base effects by other receptors. So you don't need specific IgE, but you can, for instance, have, and it appears to be an important uh, receptor, uh, off target occupation of the MRG PRX2 receptor, let's call it X2, or activation of some complement receptors. <coughs> so this shows you. The non-specific and the specific activation of a mast cell. Here you have cross-linking of specific Ig antibodies. Here you have activation by the X2 or the complement receptors. <coughs> and MRG pre X2 actually, uh, well, has gained a lot of attention since this publication uh, in Nature uh, three, four years ago, uh, because it was identified as a potential receptor to cause uh, pseudo-allergic. I'm not very keen. Uh, about the term pseudo-allergic, a, a potential cause of immediate hypersensitivity reaction involving mast cells. <coughs> and since that publication, actually, uh, a lot of drugs have been uh, studied and uh, to check whether they do or do not actually uh, occupy this X2 receptor and eventually uh, uh, trigger degranulation of mast and I would like to focus on rocuronium, atrochrome, and the opiate, mainly morphine. Uh, so McNeil actually found those two neuromuscular blocking agents to induce mast cell degeneration. Lanzo actually was not able to confirm. So there seems to be, for the moment, some uh, discussion whether those drugs actually occupy the receptor, yes or no, and do induce the uh, degranulation of the cells. <coughs> anyway, anyway, uh, recently, David Spool uh, proposed, even proposed already, to reclassify reactions due to neuromuscular blocking agents and proposed actually to reclassify some of those reactions as probably reactions from the innate immune system, even not being immune mediated reactions, traditional type A, type A hypersensitive, uh, type A reaction to drugs, so pharmacological reactions. Now, what actually we thought was that maybe basophils again can help us. Why? Because we have actually discovered that basophils, <coughs> unlike masses, do not have the X2 receptor. So the idea behind was, if we have specific activation of the master, well, you have a positive skin test, you will have a positive basophil activation test, and if IgEs are available, for a lot of drugs, IgEs are not available, uh, you have also a positive specific <coughs> IgE. And the BIT is not a basophil activation, it's a basophil inhibition test. Uh, the basophil activation test would be negative if we perform quantitative heptan inhibition studies. <coughs> In contrast, actually, for the non-specific activation, you would have a skin test that is positive, cutaneous mast cells have X2 on their membrane, uh, the basophil activation test would be negative, yeah, if you don't have an activation, you can't inhibit, that's logical, and specific IgE, if available, would be negative. And that's actually the principle of the basal inhibition test, because I think it's probably the first time that you hear about basal inhibition. So you have your basophil, what you do is, this is the normal incubation, you add an allergen, let's say rocuronium, you have cross-linking of IgE, you have degranulation, you have appearance of certain marks. Okay. This is the inhibition, you have your basophil. We know that actually morphine is sharing an epitope, uh, an ammonium epitope, it's actually that is quite similar to the ammonium epitopes in the neuromuscular blocking agent, but morphine is monovalent uh, in, uh, in contrast to the neuromuscular blocking agent. Normally, it does not trigger basophils. We have done a lot of experiments, but morphine does not trigger basophils. <coughs> um, so, actually, what it could do is it could block, it could interfere with the cross linking by the drug, and then we would actually have inhibition of the basophil activation. And this is the plot of one of our patients. So on top you have the traditional stimulation conditions, you have negative buffer, the positive control, and then look here to rocuronium, so morphine is not activating itself, but look to rocuronium, you have a clear upregulation of CD63. This is the plot of a rocuronium hypersensitive patient. What we did is we added actually inhib potential inhibitors, and we used cis and we added morphine as another in potential inhibitor, and then you can see that nor cytotrichum, nor morphine, inhibits the positive control. It does not interfere with activation of your basophils by the positive control, which is an anti-IgE. 
However, it clearly interferes, it clearly interferes with the activation of your base cells by the drug. So you can inhibit the base cell activation test procuronium by cisatochrome. You can also inhibit the base cell activation test procuronium by morphine. <coughs> and uh, this are actually nine patients we have now studied in that uh, base cell inhibition test. So you see here clear positive base cell activation tests, up to 92% of the base cells that got activated after incubation of rocuronium. We can also observe that most of those patients have specific IgEs to rocuronium and morphine. And this is actually what we have on inhibition. This is the positive control. No way to inhibit the positive control with morphine. But you see that the blue, in particular the blue lines, actually you can inhibit some of the patients, the basal activation test, by adding morphine uh, in co uh, incubation using a co-incubation experiment, morphine and rocuronium. So this is a way actually to check whether there's cross-reactivity, there's similarity between the two components, yes or no. So this is the basal activation test. Finally, specific IgE. Now the principle of specific IgE, you all well know. You spot, you couple an allergen can be a drug on a solid phase. You add serum of the patient, it's like an ELISA actually. You rinse away all the non-bound specific IgE, and then you add a secondary antibody, which is an anti-IgE, which is conjugated to a fluorochrome, and the intensity of the, the fluorescence gives you an idea about the concentration, the theta of specific IgE in the serum of the patient you're testing. Now, specific IgE uh, is available for some drugs. One, two, it's, main, it's mostly poorly validated. It's available for some beta-lactams, for some new muscular blocking agents. You can ha get, have it for trixamethonium. Eventually, you can have it for rocuron atracurum. It's not commercially available, but you can get it from the company, Spadia, Floexidin, Latex, Gelatin. And it's also op available for morphine and folcodine. Uh, I put opiates between brackets because if you look to the, uh, the package leaflet of the, the test, you will see actually that those tests are not promoted in order to study hypersensitivity to uh, opiates, but they are promoted to, to study hypersensitivity sensitization to platinum ammonium structures as found in neuromuscular blocking agents. And there's also a poppy seed available, but uh, it's in our experience uh, worthless. <coughs> so this is. Yeah, it had been proposed by a Spanish group. We tried it, but it's worthless. Uh, no offense. Now, what about specific IgE for neuromuscular blocking agents? Uh, you, here are, the, for me, the most relevant papers that have studied them. Uh, on top, you have some French pa uh, papers. You cannot, you cannot get the specific IgE for Pepsi, so we do not need to stick on that. No way to, 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 to apply these tests. Uh, here you see, actually, that some of those drug-specific IgEs are available, and that morphine can also be used as a marker, as a biomarker for sensitization to uh, quaternary and ammonium stages. And you see that actually sensitivities and specificities are not so bad, but sensitivity uh, sometimes is quite low. And it has been already mentioned that in some populations you can have up to 5 to 10 percent of those patients having specific antibodies to morphine folcodine. So, we, in this uh, analysis, evaluated the value of specific IgE for rocuronium, and it appeared to be, although be, is the, the most accessible test, you just need to ask it to the company, it is the test with the lowest predictive value, so be aware of that. And just to show you, this is, we do not do provocation tests with uh, new muscular blocking agent, full dose uh, provocation tests, but what we do is we try to get, to recontact the patient, and this here, actually, we had the opportunity to uh, reanalyze the sera of patients. Those were patients, actually, we have seen at the time IgE for rocuronium and morphine was not available. So we decided, actually, we made a diagnosis according to results of skin testing and base cell activation tests, and we were not aware of specific IgEs. And after some years, it became available. We tested those sera, and you can see, actually, then, when you have an isolated IgE for rocuronium or morphine, this does not preclude the exclusion or the, uh, the use of rocuronium in the future. So we do not make diagnosis based on a specific IgE uniquely. So we do not use specific IgEs for neuromuscular blockage in isolation to make a diagnosis. This is something what French studies have been doing, and this might actually be an overrepresentation of some of that cases. So this, this is actually the algorithm we have been proposing for rocuronium. Uh, so 
uh, anesthesiologists are urged to quantify triptase, pictase, and ba baseline triptase. Then we do skin tests. We always start the skin prick test, and then we uh, eventually, when needed, we continue with intradermal test. If you have a clear positive skin prick test, we, in my opinion, do not need an intradermal test. If the test is positive, diagnosis is established. If the test is negative, we add a basophil activation test. If it's positive, diagnosis is established. If it's negative, we continue specific IgE. If it's negative, diagnosis is included. If it's positive, we do not actually uh, rely on this isolated result to confirm diagnosis and actually we should then follow up with the patient test. Obviously, if this positive, you have your diagnosis established. I know ideally it would be nice to do the three tests in one run at the same moment, but that's difficult. It's more expensive one, and quite a lot of uh, centers do not have uh, experience with basic collectivation tests. So I told you something about specific IgE rocuronium. What about the other specific IgE that are available? Well, let's first start the specific IgE with six semitonium. These are the groups I already discussed. So all those individuals had hypersensitivity reaction during, anesth during anesthesia. Those did not get the new muscular blocking agent diagnosed at the curve, uh, according to uh, skin testing. Uh, got at the curve. Atracurum diagnosis was excluded because negative skin testing, cisatracurum positive skin test, cisatracurum got cisatracurum negative skin testing, got rocuronium positive skin test, got six semitonium positive skin test, so rocuronium allergic group, six semitonium allergic group. And then you see the specific IgE for six semitonium. It's not so bad, and it's also <laughs> positive in a lot of cases uh, that suffered from anaphylaxis to rocuronium. And there's certainly cross reactivity between those two drugs, although it doesn't seem bidirectional. Now, what about specific IgE for atracurium? And you can get it from the company. Uh, you have some about 60% about of the cases that are positive in specific IgE. Mm -hmm. And you see that it's quite a specific test. It's negative in almost all the other uh, populations. Now, when it comes to morphine, it's nice. Well, it's nice. It has some value uh, for rocuronium hypersensitivity. It can also add to the diagnosis of 6 semitonium hypersensitivity, but the leaflet of the, the package leaflet actually indicates that it's an indicator, it's a biomarker for sensitization against quaternary ammonia structure. It does not say, by the way, it's a biomarker for rocuronium hypersensitivity, it's a biomarker for 6 semitonium hypersensitivity. No, overall, it's a biomarker for uh, quaternary ammonia structure hypersensitivity. And if you look closely to the atracurum group, for instance, actually it's worthless. Sensitivity is, all, is 10%. So it works for rocuronium, it works for 6 semitonium, but it does not work for uh, atracurum, and it does not work for cisendotrium. So for the benzyl isoquinase, it seems worthless. <coughs> Two ends. I think that currently skin tests still merit the primary status, the, prim the state of primary diagnostic. I think that base activation test can uh, benefit the difficult cases. Uh, it can also add to the, the cross reactivity studies and it can help to identify safe alternatives for the future. I hope I have shown you that it can also help to unveil the mechanism that might be behind a certain hypersensitivity reaction. Is it specific? It's non specific. It has been proposed to reclassify reactions to neuromuscular blocking agents like rocuronium as being non-specific. I think it's difficult to ignore the results of skin tests, specific IG and basophil activation tests, actually. Um, in our opinion, you should not use specific IGE, IgE drug-specific IgE in isolation. They are not so specific as we would hope. And what about specific IgE for morphine? Uh, so used as a biomarker for quaternary ammonia structures. Uh, do not use it in isolation to uh, Established diagnosis um, and it can help in the diagnosis of rocuronium and 6 semitonium hypersensitivity, but it seems worthless in the diagnosis of uh, atracurium and cis atracurium. Thank you.